welcome to a painting tutorial where we're going to be looking to paint some winter leaf silverness. Um, we're going to be painting Yotharis Guardians because they've got a lot of different elements to them with the spectrums of the bows, obviously the bark and they've got the uh, the bugs and stuff on their bases so there'll be a lot of stuff that we can look at and it should cover every technique that I use for painting my winter leaf, winter grove sorry. Um, I've got here as an example, this is just what we're going for, so we've got a Kernoth Hunter uh, obviously there's a lot of bark areas on that with the spectral bows and the like black and pinky bug things and pretty much the same where the, sp the spectralness is a little bit different on the uh, on the sprites to the way I did our bows so we have to do both techniques on for example this guy's axe would be more like the bow but then his skin colour would be more like the, uh, the tree revenant there so obviously you can see I have already painted the bark so to paint the bark First thing I did was I just spray painted it all in mechanical sand grey. This is just a tree lord that I sprayed just because it's the only thing that I hadn't put any coats on yet. So mechanical sand grey base as a spray paint. Next thing to do is to go all over the model with bile tan. So I've done that to a dryad and you can see that the bile tan, I'm going to zoom a little bit on here. There we are. That bile tan coat I've done pretty much all over all of the bark. If you're doing it on tree reverence and stuff, no need to go onto the detail, but onto the uh, anywhere on bark, so that's perfect. Next stage is to do administratum grey. So the administratum grey coat we're looking for is slightly like that, so I'm just going to show you what I normally do. So, I take just a little bit, I've got a decently sized brush, dab most of it off. And then it's almost like, almost like a really thick dry brush, making sure that I'm in shot. So I still want some green coming through, but I don't want it everywhere. Oh, sorry, I don't want, um, I don't want that green everywhere. I want only the really deep cracks to be in green. Make sure you get under the, uh, actually under there and everywhere. Especially, there's quite a lot of stages to this bark, so if you miss a bit, you do, uh, you do have to do quite a lot of stages to catch something up. So especially look for bits on the bases, especially with the authorities Guardians, to make sure you don't miss anything. So, that's our admin start on grey on. I'll leave, I'd leave that to dry for a second, and then I'm going to go for a wash of Norn Oil and Agrax. So on these ones I did Norn Oil first. Um, so, this is after you get a coat of Norn Oil on, it literally just darkens it down and it brings out the cracks a little bit more. Let's focus on that a little bit better for you. There you are. So, coat of Norn Oil on first, and then over the top of that, I've done an Agrax. Then you can see we've got the pretty much completed base uh, colour. For a, um, for a Dryad, you can probably leave it at that to be fair, it's alright. However, on your Thoros Guardians, as there are a little bit more character models, uh, and such, I'm going to do a uh, just a highlight then of Administratum Grey once again, just to bring out some of the sort of higher rooted details, higher rooted, higher branch details. So I'm going to take a little, slightly smaller brush and a little coat, and I'm just going to go to where I've got raised sections of bark, and I'm not going to go insane with it. I'm just going to try and pick out some of the colours pick out some of those higher raised bits, um, especially where the paint settled a little bit darker. You can see, especially quite along the back of your Thari here, I've got quite a lot of lighter colours already, but where it's darker I'm just going to I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit more, um, just to sort of, yeah, add another little extra layer to it, but to be fair, if you're uh, just doing it for battle line like Dryads, I wouldn't worry too much about this. So, I am going to do all the highlighting on all of these. That'll be our bark done, and then we can move on to um, the sort of skin. I'm gonna call it skin. The spiritual essence skin thing. So I've done the hi edge highlighting on all four. You can see the, the sort of effect on that one guy. There you are. So uh, yeah, just picking up, packing out the sort of tops of the uh, of the bark, just to give it a little bit more. So our next stage is to start with some 
more grey for the bodies and also the weapons. So I've completely done all the grey on her. She's still a little bit wet though. Um, but yeah, I'm just going all over the anything that's sort of spiritual and I want blue afterwards. So the bodies, the weapons. Um, I've done partly the same on this guy as well. But I'm using Celestial Grey and uh, probably two knackered uh, medium brush. Um, and then anywhere that I want to be blue lighter, just going over in Celestial Grey. Just one nice coat will do because we're going to be doing a lot more layering over the top of this, so there's no reason to get this layer absolutely perfect. So, yeah, I'm also going to go over Wings of Bugs which, because I'm going to want those blue as well uh, and we'll, uh, we'll do that sort of colouring at the same time but I think I'm going to talk more about animals at the end cool, so I'm going to do these for the uh, finish this guy, and I think he's pretty much done now finish this guy and finish off the Uthari and the other dude and then I'll come back they've now all got their Celestial Grey on now I'm going to look at some of the weapons so uh, these two weapons, looking back at my previous silver knife, I've actually done swords with silver and black handles and same with axes, so I'm going to keep that consistent and that's how I'm going to be doing those. However, with the bow here, I'm going to do that just like I've done this Kurnoth bow. So I'm going to take uh, Lotharan blue and I'm going to paint the whole thing that colour. I've also gone, when I was doing the Celestial Grey, I've painted the whites uh, for the leaves. Eventually I'm going to get the leaves to be this pinky colour, but I'm going to the white on first. It's really nice to put those colour. So, that's ice white on there. Ice, not ice white, Lotharan blue on there. Then, we're going to do another wash. I'm going to do a slightly uh, softer, bigger white wash brush, which is going to be this one. And we're going to take Dragonhoff Nightshade and I'm going to apply that all over. Oops. I'll do this one. All over the whites on here that I want to be that spiritual blue colour. I'm going to do this quite thickly as well. Uh, make sure everywhere's got a nice coat. And I'm going to keep, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do that silver rather than the blue but I painted it blue earlier but that's fine because I can just go over it I've not come to the silver layer yet and the silver is going to be relatively easy I'm also going to do it on the wings of the creatures that I want to have blue wings on the back here this sort of um, container thing similar to how uh, the ones that Alarial's got I'm not going to paint those over in this blue because I want that to be a proper white rather than a uh, a blue so I'm actually going to normal oil that and do the same method I'm going to do that during this uh, job as well just so that we can put them there on top of that so I'm going to do that with the rest on all of the blues I'm also going to do that on this bow I'm not going to do it now because it might be still drying a little bit but I'm going to put Dragonhoff Nightshade over the bow as well alright Dragonhoff Nightshade's all dry on both uh, the skin and on the weapon I've also put Norn Oil onto the capsule there and I've also put it on the back of this staff because I want this staff to be quite brilliantly white as well I'm not sure what I want to do with the top I might do um, sorry I might do it as a lead belt silvery or bronze maybe silvery so um, I've also done I did when I was in Celestial Grey coat I put Celestial Grey onto the gemstones and stuff so in the back of there in there uh, also on the um, these little hangy circular things and onto those little things there so anyway we can see our skin is now quite uh, grey and dark still so I'm going to go with Lotharan blue again but this time rather than doing it as a full coat I'm just going to do it as an edge highlight um, especially on the hair on these guys um, just come in to pick out edges and just really make the uh, make the whole um, skin tone a lot brighter. So I want to do quite a lot 
of work on this one. Uh, on faces, I'm going to sort of do a little bit of the bridge of the nose and eyebrow and the, the cheeks, top of the cheek and jaw bones and the bottom of the chin and a bit of the, eye, the ears. You can see how after a little bit it's just a lot brighter. I've probably gone a little bit overboard on the face there but I'll come back and sort that out later on. Um, I would also do the eyes at this point uh, in blue. That, especially on dryads and stuff as well. I quite like the ice blue eyes. See, that's why I did those. Why not just get them white? Okay, so I'm going to go back and do them white. We'll do that again later. But on dryads and the kernel thunders, I've done the eyes and exactly in this, in this blue. Uh, for where you get into muscle, again, just tie like tops. It's got a band around the pecs and the. Uh, the marks that they tend to have on their skin. I'm just going to do the edges, I don't want to go in, in the cracks. I just want to do around the rims and the bridges that go between. So I'm going to do this on all four and then I'll come back. Okay, so the her skins have all now been highlighted, which means the skins are officially done. The next stage, or very quick stage, I'm going to do uh, specifically on these guys is to sort out the extra bits of white so that's the white up on here and the white at the staff for that I'm actually going to use Uthman Grey because it's a better white than any white so uh, I'm just going to take my layer again and go over each of these sections so that's that white there the other thing I'm going to do now I'll stop that for a second is to do these gemstones now for the gemstone little bits I'm going to use in soulstone blue so that's anywhere that I've got I'm use a medium layer or a smaller brush again anywhere I've got these little dots of gemstone so I'll do a bit there and on the reverse that's also what I'm going to do on the little uh, gemstone bits sorry that's not really centered the little gemstone bits there in the middle of them and is there anything else more on this one no i don't think so but here on the back of the crown on these dangly bits not ridiculously thick but a good coating on there focusing more at the bottom especially on these ones and I know this guy's got one on the little dangly bits that look like hands. Any of the other dangly bits that you painted white as well. Come here. Cool, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do the rest of the white and then I'll come back. Next we're gonna go and do some metal. So I've done all of that white and stuff. I've also redone his in celestial grey at the bottom. Um, I couldn't decide what I was going to do with it to start with, uh, but I just think I've decided now that I'm going to do it like the pink leaves. So this um, lead belcher, I'm going to do on all my metal parts, which is very few on uh, Sylvaneth. So just the swords and the tree ornaments, front and then back. I should do it on this axe head as well, and I think I'm also going to do it on this staff. And I'm going to do it just where it winds over and try not to ruin the white that I've done below. And I'm also going to do it on the uh, hilts as well here. This white looks like it's going to need another coat, which is fine. I will do that as well. That's why we do them in thin coat, two, two thin coats. You can see the gemstones as well looking really nicely now they've uh, tried to look better. So I'm going to finish up some lead belt here. I'm also going to go about doing the black on the staffs and the hilts of all the handles, as well as putting a black coat on the carapa on basically the entire bugs that we haven't painted anywhere but the wings. And then I'll come back. That's that for the lead belt here and Abaddon black. So I've done black on all of the uh, bugs um, and silver on all of the swords and black 
on uh, the handles and grips and stuff for it, leaving that little blue gemstone in the middle. We'll do a little bit more bug work because we'll do some lead belts for in a second. So for the bugs, I've got a brush here which I'm going to do all the squidgy bits of them in, uh, as you can see the purple. So I've mixed that up. So the squidgy bits, uh, anything that's not carapace. So I'm going to do in between the legs on these types of bugs, the bottom of the head there, and then this guy's gap between there as well as also I'm going to do these little gaps in there I could have also done these blue because it looks like that could be where arrows are coming from go around the back of them and do the same just in between the carapace turn around the head and then in the little holes Beautiful. We have other longer books that are more flyy. So this guy, for example, has got a big tail, and I can sort of see where his carapace ends and his tail begins. If it, it's hard to tell with some of these guys, so if you can't tell where carapace starts and ends, just pick a bit and be confident with it. If it looks good enough. Um, without paint that you think that's where the carapace ends then with the paint you'll be able to sort of just most definitely decide that thing and if you've gone over or under you can always correct it anyway so that's how I'm going to do the squishy bits for their eyes I'm going to use red and I'm going to use quite a big bright red Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm probably going to use the same brush wherever I just put it and especially this guy's got really big eyes and they're going to be really big red eyes. That is way too much paint on that brush. Like that. So I'm going to do that on the other books. And yeah, done. Back. That is all of our purple and red eyes done for the bugs. I'm going to leave those for a second and we're going to do one more coat concerning the bases and then we're going to do a big normal oil wash on multiple different things so for the bases there's one more thing occasionally I put it on some of my others but especially on this with the more intricate scenery there's little bits of stone that looks like a stone figure of some sort and pebbles and things on my normal silverneth I just put little bits of cork rock on there or you can use any sort of thing right anyway to do that um, grey colour. I'm just going to go back to do Administratum grey and I'm going to give each of these rocks just a coat in that. I think this is a statue and I'm going to do that in the same colour if that makes sense to me. I'm going to try not to get it on the bark which shouldn't be too bad if I do because it's the same colour that we highlighted with and the base we're going to do a little bit more work on afterwards so if you get some bit of start on grey on the base that's fine as well. So it's quite a, a lot of rock work here, so I'm not going to have to, I'm not going to put you through all that. I'm just going to do it and all the statues, and then we're going to go on to something more fun, and that's a massive coat of wash. So I've got all the administrative grey on for the rocks. I've done two relatively thin coats on the uh, on all those. There's one more little detail on the base that you can also have on tree lords and stuff. I've just noticed that I'm going to pick up on for this using a very dried out pot of main blade brown and just on this guy on the base he's got a couple of mushrooms that are growing on the on the tree trunk and I'm just going to do those in this really light brown colour. Now we've got our brown on I think it's time to do a big wash, well two big washes the first one is going to be Norn Oil once again, and this Norn Oil is going to go over a lot of the, a lot of the model. So I'm going to go over the weapons, the silver of the weapons, quite liberally on the weapons, and we'll touch them up again later. It's a bit on the hilts as well, and on the blades. I'm also going to take that coat over the Gene Steeler purple that we put on, on there and might as well go over the uh, so I have to go over there so that's cool then 
I'm going to put it over any of the stonework that we picked out with administrator grey earlier. Once we've got non oil, non oil over the majority of this model, there we go, I don't think I've missed any of it, that's fine. I'm then going to do another wash on top of that, and that wash is going to be of Karaberg Crimson, which is our red colour, and I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. Make Lego look like you can have a perfect wash holder. I recommend it. And this, I'm literally just going to pick out every single little, little flower petal. I'm also going to make a second wash for our flowers. And this one's a little overkill. You can do it with caribou crimson if you want. But I do quite like some of the lighter pink flowers as well. For that, I'm going to be using Empress Children and a little bit of Laramon Medium Technical. So I'm going to start with the Laramon first because I want to keep that clean. And I'm literally just going to get a little bit out of the brush. Put it in the palette. And then go straight for the Empress Children. Put that next to it and then I'm going to mix the two together to make a really thin wash. And then with that, I can pick out some of the other leaves and we can have a slight little variation in colour between the two. So I'm going to do all of the leaves everywhere and all the lead belcher. And I'm also going to give this a nice pink coat as well. And then I shall come back. Those washes are all dry now. And just to finish off the weapons, I'm going to do a little bit of an edge highlight just with Iron Breaker. Uh, and, sorry, and all the metal as well. So here on the staff, staff. Uh, which is a little wet still, so I'm going to avoid that. But it's still wet, it's wet in the middle of the crack, so I can do the tops, which is fine. And I'm just going really lightly over, I don't want to go too mental. Same with the weapons, I'm going to do just the edges of them like that. Cool, and same on the bottom hill as well. Sort that out. Cool, uh, and I also did metal up on this cap as well, which I'm going to highlight just to make it a little bit more polished. So I do like the weathering, but I feel like they'd keep their blades nice and clean. One last touch, and then the models will be complete. And that's just to do their eyes. I mentioned earlier I was going to do white. Again, I'm going to use Uthwan Grey for my white, which it settles a lot easier. Nice little brush that I was doing with my edge highlights. I'm just going to put a little dot in each eye. I'm not going to bother with pupils on these because I don't think they'd have them. And most of their eyes are covered by hair, so that's convenient, I guess. There we go. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of an, too much of an oval shape that overspilled a little bit, but that's cool. That's all of our guys now completely done. So, I'm going to move on to the bases now. So the bases, most of it's been done as we've been going through the model, because we've just been transferring what's on them onto the base. The rocks and such, the rocks and leaves and branches and such, which is pretty much that. But we want a little bit, a little bit more snow. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get... Because we've got a little bit of green spilling over to some of that dirt. So I'm going to clean that dirt up a little bit just by using some Mechanica Standard Grey. Which is the same paint that we used to spray the model to start with. Um, I'm going to use my Standard Brush again. And I'm just going to go everywhere that's dirt with this. And retouch it up so that we don't have any of that green over spilling. So, in, around here. So I'm going to do this on all four, and then we'll uh, give it a wash and then put some uh, snow effect on it. All right. Now that those have been regrayed, I'm going to do one more wash of Agrax uh, onto there, just to add a little bit of 
uh, brown colour to uh, that texture. Now if I didn't have all this texture already, I would be using this technical. I struggle on it to burn debris so when I've not had this texture to do these I've put a little bit of that on uh, after the mechanic is standard wait for that to dry and then uh, and then washed it in Agrax however as I've got all this beautiful texture that's on the base already there's no need to do that on this person's base they seem to have a little bit of uh, a blank spot in the, in the middle which I've interpreted as ice so to do that little bit of ice down there I've just painted it uh, celestial grey and then doing a mix of um, Lothram blue and Laram and medium just like I did the pink on the leaves just to add a little bit of blue to that white uh, ice colour down there I will probably add a um, bit of a technical on top of that to make it shine a little bit after it's dry but we'll come to that when we come to that so I'm going to put the Agrax on all of these which shouldn't take too long, I'll wait for it to dry, then then we'll actually put some snow on it. I know I said that last time, but then we, we are going to put snow on, I promise. Now we've got that wash all applied, I'm going to add a little bit of Valhalla and Blizzard. I am going to use a, a, a snow technical as well afterwards, however, I find the Valhalla and Blizzard is really, really good to, to have a little bit of it on. That way, because the snow texture seems to break off quite easily, uh, once it's glued, this Valhalla Blizzard is not going to do such a thing. So I'm going to put it in little clumps around in places where I know I'm going to want snow to stay. Uh, I'm going to do that on all of them. For this ice on here, I've got some of this. Um, it's Bush Bush uh, Ma Model Wasser Aqua. Uh, German, I assume. Um, so <laughs> it's going to go. I only want a tiny little bit of it, so I'm going to pour it here. Any sort of water effect will probably do you. Um, but this is the one that I've found and I've been using. Just to get a little bit of shine on that ice. Ooh. So I'm just going to put probably too much down there. Just wipe that off with my fingers. And then I'm going to pick up a bit of this. And try and squeeze it in that very tiny gap. There we go, that should fill it. So this will dry, clear colour. Should hopefully give us either a water or icy effect. Either way, I'm hoping for ice. But uh, either way, it should be, uh, should look quite nice. Put that up a little bit too far on the rock as well. Well, maybe the rock's frozen over a little bit. There we go, so that's that. I'm now going to put Valhalla and Blizzard everywhere. And then we'll apply some uh, PVA snowflake stuff in a second. So we've got our Valhalla Blizzard texture on. It's still drying a little bit, but that's fine because we'll be able to put some uh, of this snowflake stuff into it as well. This is Games Workshop's old snowflake stuff. I don't believe they sell this anymore. But you should be able to find any sort of flaky powdered snow uh, from model stores or Amazon. So once again, just where I haven't and next to where I have put uh, some of this snow texture before um, I'm gonna put some PVA on once you've got PVA where you want it to then I would just bring your powder up I've got loads of bits in mind but that's from getting sand and stuff from other textures so I'm just gonna very lightly drip it on and then if I get bits I'm gonna chuck those in the bin that should do us knock it out into there I always find that you get more coming up later, so I'm going to do one. I'm going to keep going through all of them. And then I'm going to go back, I'm going to knock some more off of these. And I'm going to rub my thumb around to uh, knock some of the snow off the sides. So we keep a nice clean rim. And now we're pretty much done, except for what I think is the most important step when painting a model. And that's you take a really thick, big brush and black. Just get the black onto one side and then I'm just going to go around and put the sides of the base back in black. And that's them all finished then. So that's how you paint the my winter leaves. Oh, so I'm have a little bit of stuff there I've just noticed. It's gone from there. There you go. Uh, that's how the ice effects turned out as well. It's quite difficult to see. Let's pull it back into focus. 
to dry a little bit, but I think it looks like a little bit of ice water, so that's cool. So I am very happy with all of those. Hopefully, either you've uh, you're going to do this sort of technique yourself, or you've learnt a little bit of how I paint my models. And there's their bags. Well, I will look forward to using these and finish painting those dryads that you saw at the start. And I'll see you next time.